In this video, I'm going to show you how to install a GUI or a graphical user interface on a headless Ubuntu server. And I just want to start out with a warning that this is probably not a good idea to do on a production server that has, you know, a, a public facing website or a web app that people are using because it just adds a lot of complication to the packages that are installed on the server and potentially introduces security vulnerabilities. So uh, with that, um, I guess necessary warning. Let's go ahead and get on into the tutorial. All right, so I am logged into an Ubuntu server here at this IP address. And what I wanna do is, as always, do an apt update. And that'll be followed up with an apt upgrade. Now these should all be up to date because I was just in here checking it and they are. So the first thing we wanna do is to install something called task cell. So apt install task cell. And this was something new to me, something that I haven't um, seen before, but it's basically allows you to install uh, like a collection of software at once um, instead of installing each individual package. So it's very valuable in that sense. So uh, now that we have that, we want to install a display manager. Now. Um, GNOME, the GNOME desktop by default uses something called GDM3 as the default display manager. And from what I understand, this is very heavy. It's not light at all. We want to install a different display manager than what comes packaged with Ubuntu desktop. Okay, so we're running Ubuntu server. We're going to add a, a desktop environment to it, uh, but we don't because we're going to access it over the over the network, over the internet potentially, um, we want something lightweight. So we have a couple options. One of them is Slim, apt install Slim if you want that one. Another one is Light DM, and there's there's a couple more than this. There's a few more than this. I think Light DM in size is like 400 megabytes bigger than Slim, so I'm going to stick with Slim for now. And that is 470 megabytes. So let's go ahead and install that. Okay, so we can actually check that. Uh, you can check what your default display manager is on any system, if any, uh, in the etc x11 default display manager file. Just take a look at that. And because we had it just installed Slim, that is our new display manager. Okay, so let's use task cell, T S K S E L to install Ubuntu desktop. Now, normally you would have to install all the individual components together or separately, but uh, this allows you to do that with just pretty much one click. So um, I found that if you see Ubuntu cloud image checked by default, keep it checked. And then in addition to that, use the arrow keys to come down to Ubuntu desktop or another version that you want to install. Uh, hit your space bar to select it, tab down to OK and hit enter. Now this takes quite a while to install, probably, I don't know, five, five, 10 minutes. I'll let you know, but we'll fast forward through this part as well. Okay, so that installed, it took about five minutes, and now we have an Ubuntu desktop environment running on our remote server. But how do we see things? How do we connect to it and interact with it graphically? Well, we're gonna use something called VNC, which stands for Virtual Network Computing. Um, and there has to be a server aspect to the VNC communication and the client aspect on your local machine. So the client's going to connect to the server and show Ubuntu desktop. Very simple explanation, but let's go ahead and install something called Tiger VNC standalone server. So apt install Tiger VNC standalone server. And I just want to point out that this is not your only option. You can use another VNC server. I'm just choosing Tiger VNC here. So let's go ahead and install that. And that shouldn't take too long. And once we do that, let's create, if you don't already have it, uh, let's create a user for the to log into the, the server. Um, so we'll do add user. And I'll say Tony, and we'll give him a password. Retype the password and a name, room number, work, home, other. Yes. Okay, so we have a user called Tony. Let's switch over to that user with su Tony. Now we are operating as Tony. And 
with the VNC server package installed, we can type in VNC server dash local host no. And what this is going to do is uh, set up a VNC server. You will require a password to ask access your desktop. So I'll, t I'll give it, I'll create a password. I'll verify that password. And would you like to enter a view only password? No. So now we have a VNC server up and running on our remote computer. We can confirm that with VNC server dash list. And you'll see that here. So um, basically this is the port we're going to connect on at our IP address. So this IP address colon 5901. And then we're going to use the password that we just created to access it. So let's do that. Um, there's a lot of different options you can use for the client. There's a built in screen sharing app on Mac. You can also install a VNC um, software on Mac or if you're on a different computer, you can install something like Tight VNC. What are the other ones? Tiger VNC, Ultra VNC. Uh, if you're on Windows and stuff like that. So, uh, what we're going to use is uh, the VNC server that I installed, which is VNC Viewer. And I'm going to come in here and right click New Connection. And we're going to give them the credentials that we just talked about. So, the IP address is 161.35.2300. Two dot seven colon fifty nine oh one right fifty nine oh one. 5901 right 5901 uh the name we'll just call it uh tony's tony's server tony server okay uh now we'll double click on that connecting to tony's server this is a warning that this is an unencrypted connection so stuff that's going back and forth could be plain text it's over the tcp port um so we'll continue with that, knowing that, and then we'll type in that password that we just created. So let me type that in, click OK, and there you go. So this is our remote, this was a one time, this used to be a headless Ubuntu server, and now we have a desktop running, specifically Ubuntu desktop. So uh, this is the first time that we're seeing this. Next, 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 start using Ubuntu. So um, here's all of your applications that are installed by default. You can show all of the individual ones. It's not the most, um, uh, what should I say, like the display is not high resolution or anything. This is a lot of data being packed, passed back and forth. Um, but you can see a graphical user interface. So for example, let's open up uh, the Firefox web browser. That opens up fairly quickly. Uh, let's go to google.com. And again, this is, this is a remote connection to a remote server over the VNC uh, connection and it seems to be working good. Tony teaches tech. So there you go. This is this is really cool. So we'll go back to our, our terminal session um, just to show you a little bit how to manage it and we'll get out of here for now. Uh, you can do like we did before VNC server dash list. Uh, if we're done with that server, we can type in VNC server, S-E-R-V-E-R dash -E -E kill. And then you can use the shorthand here, uh, colon one, to turn off that server. And it successfully killed that server process. And if you look at the server list again, that doesn't exist anymore. So if we try to go back into our VNC viewer and connect to that, it'll eventually error out probably hang here for a bit and then error out. I have a bunch of other videos about remote desktop connections, copying files to and from, all that stuff. So if that interests you, subscribe to this channel and I'll see you in the next one.